Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chairperson Joe Hayes, um, Theresa Griffin, CEO, and members of the National Council for Special Education presenters and attendees. Iskush Ohustum Eva on Show Liver Majin, Bawalam Bavuikas, a Kavoil Gokdina, a Tor Porchok, Sakov Goil Show. And I'm delighted to be able to join you today at the opening of the 2021 NCSE Research Conference. And I would like to thank the NCSE Council and Executive Management for their very kind invitation. The theme of today's conference is continuity of education and dealing with regression post-pandemic and education for adults with disabilities. And so it is fitting that today's speakers have the international expertise which will bring a pan-European perspective on both the impact of COVID-19 on special education and on learning experiences for the future. The NCSE performs a number of roles in our educational system, and key amongst those are the provision of supports to our schools to promote a continuum of educational provision so as to ensure that what is delivered is inclusive uh, and meets the needs of students with special educational needs. And in my role as Minister, the NCSE plays a critical role in providing policy advice. And this advice informs education provision and supports and helps ensure that policy and provision develops and evolves so that students with special education needs are helped to perform to their potential and to achieve good education and life outcomes. And conferences like this facilitate the coming together of practitioners, teachers, SNAs, school managers, experts in a variety of disciplines in special education and, of course, policy makers. And the associated sharing of experiences along with the knowledge of best practice and the latest research findings brings an energy and a vibrance to practice and policy making that will benefit children into the future. And I would like again to thank the Council for organising uh, the conference. And I've said it before, and it remains a core belief of mine, and I'm, I'm sure of everyone here, that rights are inherent to us all as human beings. They're not favours handed down by powerful people. Every human being, no matter their orientation, background, circumstance or ability, is of equal importance. However, equality is not simply about treating everyone the same. Equality involves recognising that different people have different needs, and it is by meeting those needs that people become free to achieve their full potential. And this is how the human dignity of each individual is respected and empowered. And this is why the provision of education for children with special education needs is a priority for me as Minister for Special Education and Inclusion. We all know how challenging the last year has been for the entire education se sector, particularly for staff and students in special education. COVID-19 forced a period of distance learning which caused huge challenges to the special education sector. And I want to commend uh, and thank all of our school staff, as well as the NCSE staff, NEPS and other bodies who went above and beyond to support students during this period. And since my appointment as Minister, I've met teachers, SNAs, school staff, families, young people and advocacy organisations who are committed to the values of education and work day in, day out, so that the educational rights of children with additional needs are fully validated. No one knows better uh, the impact that recent months have had. It is for this reason that government chose to prioritise special education as part of school reopening. And we have said all along that special education is an essential service and that students with additional needs do best in school, in person. And while the department ensured the provision of increased guidance and supports for schools, no plan B is as good as in-person learning. And though it took longer than we would otherwise have wished, special schools and special classes reopened first in advance of the wider education system. A supplementary provision was put in place to prioritise one-to-one in-person education for students with additional needs in mainstream education. And over 14,000 students benefited from this support. 
Working with colleagues, I was able to deliver an expansion of the summer programme and a new COVID learning and support scheme or class uh, introducing, uh, which was introduced, which was totaled a total of over 100 million to help schools to provide targeted supports to those students who need it most, some of whom who may never have benefited from this support before. And all of this was done with the support and the dedication of education staff across the country. So working together, we will guarantee that special education remains a priority for this government. However, we must continue to strive for change and improvement. And I know well that challenges remain and that there is still an awful lot of work to be done. I'm certainly not blind to that. And our commitment is to provide each child with an education in accordance with their need and the necessary education and care supports. And until this is achieved, there will always be more work to be done. The numbers of special classes, special education teachers, and special needs assistance are at unprecedented levels, and so too is the number of children receiving support across the continuum that includes mainstream classes, special classes, and special schools. This is a significant achievement, but we must do more. The government's commitment to delivering on this priority area in education was demonstrated in Budget 2022, which allocated very significant additional teacher and SNA resources to special education settings. Next year, in 2022, we will spend in excess of 2.2 billion, or over 25% of the department's budget, on providing additional teaching supports for children with special educational needs. This represents an increase of over 50% in total expenditure since 2011. Budget 2022 will provide over 980 new teachers and 1,165 new SNA posts for allocation to schools next year. These new posts will allow us to meet the demand for new school places and will also provide additional supports to students currently at school. The 980 new teacher posts is broken down as follows. 620 of the new posts will provide additional supports for children attending mainstream classes, including new and expanding schools. 360 posts will facilitate the opening of 287 new special classes, providing over 1,700 new places in 2022 and 140 new places in special schools. The 1,165 SNA posts covering primary and post-primary is broken down as follows. 574 to support students in new special classes, 46 to support students in new special school places, and 545 to support students in mainstream classes. This is important progress, but we have to strive for more. So along with this, under the National Development Plan, 4.4 billion has been allocated for investment in school infrastructure during the period 2021 to 2025. This plan, as we know, aims to ensure that children with special educational needs are accommodated in suitable classroom learning environments, whether that is a mainstream class, a special class, or indeed a special school. Recently, I visited Colbay Special School in Port Leash and indeed St. Teresa's Special School in Ballinasloe, both of which will benefit from a new state-of-the-art building as part of our National Development Plan investment in education. I welcome this vital investment, which will help schools to support learners with complex, need, complex needs to progress and to participate in their learning experiences. It is an important step on the road, but the road does go on. In other areas of special education, important work is ongoing. I was pleased to publish the recent guidelines on the use of reduced school days to ensure that they are only utilised where absolutely necessary and not as a form of punishment. In addition, NEPS, along with the NCSC, the De Department's Inspectorate and the Middletown Centre for Autism are developing best practice guidelines for schools on supporting students with autism. These guidelines are currently being finalised and an implementation plan will be developed to support schools with their implementation over the coming years. 
This will be a resource for schools to support the needs of students with autism and will assist school staff to understand the varied nature of those needs as well as to identify whole school and individualised approaches to intervention. Furthermore, I am delighted to see that the research commissioned by the NCSC on Education and Adult Day Services will be presented to the conference this afternoon. I also want to pay tribute to the work of the NCSC in establishing new special classes across the country. We currently have a record of 2,118 special classes in place, with 269 new special classes opened this year. Next year, working with schools, we will add an additional 289. This is a noteworthy commitment to delivery and a demonstration of our commitment in this area. A matter in which I take particular interest is the transition from and within education. It is key that transitions at each stage of the education journey are planned and that the students are fully supported before, during and after the transitioning process. At present, there are concerns regarding the transitions of our young people from special education settings into further or higher education training programmes or work placements, and there are a number of initiatives underway which I hope will help improve students and supports for these young people into the future and adulthood. And one example of this is that on Monday of this week, we announced a new pilot initiative which will involve my department partnering uh, with an NGO uh, with a number of schools with experience in this area, uh, identified following a call for participation to support the transition of post-primary level students with special educational needs to employment, training or further study. And under the proposal, the pilot will take place on seven project sites, each partnering with a careers and employment facilitator to engage with students and their parents and collaborate with teachers in complementary activities such as mini companies, work experiences and transition planning. So I look forward to re reading the research report, which I know will help inform our thinking in this regard. And I'm particularly interested in the good practice framework as it sets out expected standards in the adult day services which provide education and life learning supports to adults with dis disabilities. So while we have made good progress, there remains much work, as I have said, to be done. I am determined to continue to advocate for all students with special needs in my role as Minister for Special Education and Inclusion. And as I conclude, I want again to thank you uh, for the invitation to speak at the, at the opening of this conference. And I know you have a busy and full agenda today ahead of you, and I have no doubt that the discussions uh, will be stimulating and informative. Gunari Gugialiv.